using my nib that I repaired to uh, do a drawing and sometimes normally I think of delicate nibs as those that I suggest are used by calligraphers rather than sketchers because the calligrapher has a set of standardized lines and strokes that they make and a calligrapher, I mean a draftsman on the other hand, doesn't really have those same things. And what I decided about some pens though, like this one that has the damaged nib, it isn't consistent enough for the calligrapher to be happy with what they're getting. But it's okay for sketching. It's very strange. I'm trying to understand this myself, and I probably should try to figure it out before I start broadcasting to the universe my thoughts on the subject. But the plan is here in my head, the plan in my head is that there is a degree of exactitude that a calligrapher requires for them to make the standardized lines that they make. And um, they don't want to have a pen that doesn't have that. And I think an artist could draw with anything. I think that you, know, you give them a blunt pencil and they'll make do with a blunt pencil. And they don't need it to be sharp, whereas a calligrapher might require more exactitude in their tools. So this nib, though damaged and though fragile because of its damage, I find that I can put it to use as a drawing tool and the problems that it has, I don't see that as a deterrent to my being able to draw a knight in armor here. Forgot these. That's a sword right down the middle. Excalibur. So this is a a John Holland dip pen nib I bought on eBay, and the eBay listing, which I did not read carefully enough, said that all of the nibs on the dip pens had issues. Now that was a polite way of saying they were fucked up. <laughs> we all have issues. I have issues. Uh, uh, but I think it, it could have been, without too much difficulty, the seller could have said what those issues were. Iridium is missing. The tines are bent, there's a crack here, there's a whatever there, and uh, issues was a little too broad a term. Now this is a picture of the Kaiser in, an, in a, I'll make his mustache here, coming out of the hole in his, oh, at a spike. I made his arm here a little shorter than I didn't intend to do that, but now that there's a smaller, shorter arm here, he's turned into the Kaiser. With his famous withered arm. There was a joke. Evidently, Hermann Goering, in, during World War II, enjoyed hearing jokes about himself. And 
he paid five Deutsche Marks for every one that he would get. And I'm sure there were many jokes about him that people were afraid of telling him. But there was one joke that goes roughly, Hermann Goering discovered the Kaiser's stash of uniforms and had his arm shortened surgically so he could wear them, which I wouldn't put it past him to have done that. I'm adding some spikes. The Kaiser has spikes on his shoulders, not just on his helmet here. I was once at a gay bar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And there was a guy there with his get up, his bling, his leather drag, whatever you want to call it. And he had uh, straps and harnesses and whatever the leather people like. And his, he had sh shoulders his leather jacket had shoulder pads sort of on them and they were all had spikes, little nails sticking out. And it reminded me of those statues you see in public parks that have little nails sticking out so the pigeons don't land on them. And that's what made me think. I thought, is he afraid of pigeons? Anyway, so here's what I'm doing with this pen. So let's get back to the pens here. Back to the important matter at hand. So sometimes fragility makes me say, yes, this pen cannot be trusted in the hands of an artist because an artist will screw it up. And in a way, yes, an artist would, would break this pen because it's already... Uh, has problems, but if you have, if you're a sensitive lad like me, if you're sensitive. I'm so sensitive. There, if you're sensitive like me, uh, as I am, you and you know the limits of the pen, you're able to draw with it without harming it. And as I said yesterday in another e uh, video about this particular pen. Um, I'm going to keep using it and let it die with its boots on. Well, there's a sword there. You can't see it, but there's a sword there. And let's just turn this into his shield. He's holding his shield with his other hand. Okay, okay. What I'm doing is I'm dipping this pen. I've, I haven't actually uh, put a sack in it, but with, with my Dr. Frankensteinian um, Franken pens I make, I normally don't fill them. Even though they have sacks in them, I don't fill them because um, you really do need to have ink right there, ready to go at any moment. And by dipping them, I'm assured of that. The, the feed and the splaying of the nib is not strong enough. Uh, I mean, I need a, a stronger flow than I can always get here. The study of shields and her heraldry, heraldic rules is really fascinating. Um, and among the most fascinating parts is the way that you describe how 
what the shield look, looks like. The herald, the herald is the guy that comes out on the field, the jousting field, before the, the combatants come out, and he will say with words, he does a description of the shield that the coat of arms that the, the man is wearing. And it's a very, very distinct way of speaking. Um, one of the fun and really hard to get your brain wrapped around elements of the description is you cannot use the same color word twice, nor can you use the same quantity twice. So if the shield has two ducks and two boar's heads on it, you can say two ducks, and then describing the quantity of boar's heads, you say of the first, meaning of the first quantity you mentioned. And if there were two ducks and two boar's heads, three gold balls and three red circles, you then have to say, you know, two ducks heads, boar's heads of the first, three gold balls, three diamonds, I'm, I'm sorry, red diamonds of the second. So anyway, you have to, you can't use this, the quantity twice and you can't use the color twice. So the first thing that you, the first color you mention, whatever that color is, red, let's say, you, every other time you have a thing that's colored red, you have to say of the first, meaning in this case, of the first color. So it makes it very complicated and a lot of fun. So there's the Kaiser in his suit of armor drawn with a broken pen nib. Well, a pen nib as I described. The pen nib, I will illustrate the pen nib for you. I'm zooming in at one billion magnification. And here's one tine, and there's the other tine. And it comes up to the point here. And right here at the point is one single atom of iridium because there's so little iridium on here it's like one single atom and the electrons are such that they fly around and some you know most of the time there's an even distribution so that the line you make is pretty consistent but every once in a while the line is not consistent and that's when you get a bunch of electrons on this side and not very many on that side. So, obviously, I'm not, I'm making this up. Um, but that's the feeling I get when I use this pen, is there's, there, and there is not enough iridium on here to make it really work perfectly. Um, if there were, it would be great for calligraphers, but it's just not consistent enough in that way. And to draw, to draw the way I'm drawing, sort of half doodling, half drawing, I'm able to do a pretty good job. So there you go. Thank you for watching. Auf Wiedersehen.